Today, I will be talking about time as capital and the sin of wasting time. The probability to succeed through Atomy's system is higher than any other system. But this does not mean it brings 100% success. About 60% will be successful and 40% will fail. What then is the difference between the successful 60% and the failed 40%? It's quite simple. Those who quit are failures. But those who don't give up till the end will succeed. The difference is the rate of success. The rate of success. The rate of success shows how well one spent their time. Those who spent their time well will succeed faster. Those who are lazy for them it will be slow. However, even the lazy ones, if they don't give up till the end, they can succeed. This capital called time, no matter if you're rich or poor, it is given equally to everyone. And depending on how you use this capital will determine your success or failure. Time is a capital given equally to everyone. How you use it will show by the rate of success and determine between success or failure. Atomy is a global business. You all know what a global business is, right? Global business. But you should not misunderstand what global business means. One could say, in this age, of course all businesses are a global business. The reason why we can call this a global business is because Atomy has a worldwide one server. This means that a member in Korea can have a partner in the United States under them. Then what about other MLM companies? It's not possible for them. For those companies, if you want to do business in the United States, you have to go to the U.S. and register your business there. It does not work. Or, let's say there is a member in the U.S. and they want to put a person from North Korea under them. In Atomy, this is possible. It is possible due to the authoritative interpretation of the Fair Trade Commission. They authorized it. In that sense, Atomy is a global business. If the system has been set up as so and still one can't be successful, that means that the person has not done anything. Atomy has all the right conditions for one to be successful. I am not talking about subjective conditions. I have a list of nine conditions here. There is no sunk cost, which means there is no initial cost. Second, it is a luxury for the masses. Mastige. It is a mastige product. Third, the company hosts the training program. There are people here who were in Company A and Company H, right? Who does the training there? The members do it by groups, right? The leaders do it. But is it free? No, you have to pay. However, in Atomy, the company leads the training. Next is a fair compensation plan for its members. There is a ceiling for everyone and it is $50,000, so it is about sharing with another. For Company A, the person who makes the most makes $10 million. The percentage limit that the government allows is 35%. What happens if all the wealth goes to only a few people? Everyone else becomes a sitting duck. That is why we do not follow that path. And next is the super synergy of United Hearts, as President Park said. This is very important. If you don't do this, you can't succeed. We have a very sound financial structure. We don't have any debt at all. So, you should not worry that you will not receive any compensation. You should sell more during that time. You don't have to worry about that at all. It is a rewarding business. It is very rewarding. Why? Because you do not bring harm to others. What happens if you sell an expensive product that has bad quality? It is not rewarding and you will wonder why you are in the business. However, 
If you sell Mastige products at a lower price, it does not bring any harm to others. Next is that it is a challenging business. This is not an easy business. Those who only overcome their circumstances can be successful. You think you will be successful without doing anything? No way. That is not true for any business. At the same time, it is a global one server. Time does not wait for anyone. A day is 24 hours for everyone. How will you use this capital called time? Time waits for no one. If you use time foolishly, it will retaliate. It will surely do. Time will not just let you be. Those that waste time will get their fair share of revenge, and that revenge will come in the form of poverty. Poverty, that is the result of sin for wasting time. Who must deal with this poverty? Only those that wasted time will have to deal with poverty. No one can take that person's place. Next. You've seen this before, right? It's Napoleon. He said, I may lose land, but I never lose a minute. That is how Napoleon could be an emperor at the age of 35. He was born in Corsica, a French colony. He graduated from the Artillery Military Academy. At 29, he became a general, and at 35, an emperor. He used his time preciously, but what happened to him? He lost at the Battle of Waterloo and got banished to the island of Elba. When he died, he said in his will, Today my misery is one of the revenge of the time I went wrong. He was an emperor at 35, and, while being caught in the highlands of Africa, he says that this was due to his misspent time in the past. Ah, <sighs> Don't blame others. Reflect and see if you used your time wisely or foolishly. Time does not just let you be. Time retaliates to those who wasted time. Next is Edison. Time is really the only capital that any human being has. And the thing that he can least afford to waste or lose. Will you be a leader or a mere follower? Leader, yes, at least you have a loud voice. A leader. Does a leader lead in front or follow from the back? The definition of a leader is to lead in front. A leader leads other people in front. What happens if a leader wanders off to a wrong path? What happens? Everyone dies, right? Everyone dies. Therefore, because Atomy has a compensation ceiling, we emphasize that everyone is number one. Everyone is a leader, not a follower. Then, if you want to lead from the front, you need to know. You need to know in order to be a leader. If you're a leader and lead others to the wrong path, you fall under the sin of wasting time. You have just wasted your partner's time. This is what Steve Jobs said. It is not your fault if you were born poor. Why? How can you blame anyone to be born from a poor family? He also adds, but if you get old poor, then it's your fault. Why? That is because you have wasted time. You wasted time, right? What does the sin of wasting time fall under? It is sin that leads to your own execution. The West has been a world leader the last 200 years because of this. The West used time wisely while the East wasted time for 200 years. So the West led the East from the front. Wasting time leads to your own execution. Have you seen the movie Papillon? The movie shows that you have to pay with your own execution. It's from the movie Papillon. Papillon, which is a French word, means butterfly. The character in the movie has a tattoo of a butterfly on his arm. It is actually an autobiography of Henri Charrière. It is an autobiography remade into a movie. The main character gets involved into gangs during his youth. and he goes to prison for killing a pimp in a red-light district. However, he says that he has never done such a thing. That is why he keeps escaping from prison. He tried to escape ten times, and he gets caught all ten times.
Eventually, he goes into solitary confinement in Devil's Island in France. And this is what this movie's about. In reality, however, he had never killed the pimp. One night in a dream, he goes in front of a judge. He goes to the judge in front of the twelve apostles and rejects the charge. Then the judge gives him the verdict. Yes, you are right, you might have never killed a person. However, you will be executed for having wasted your youth. Then Papillon acknowledges the verdict that he deserves execution. I deserve the death penalty. The sin for wasting one's life is the death penalty. This phrase also comes from a different source. It is seen from the greatest intellect of the 19th and 20th century, from Max Weber's work. With the publication of this book, Marx's theory crumbles. It is The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. This work influenced the world's economic order immensely. In this book is the phrase, The sin for wasting time deserves the death penalty. So, what does this say about the sin for wasting your time? It means that you will have to spend the rest of your life in poverty. It means if you waste your life now, no one will be responsible for it. God has given you all the exact same amount of time. Why then did you waste all your capital? Tolstoy writes a very important message in his last book. He says that amongst all the books he wrote, his last book would contribute the most to humanity. He also wrote something in the preface. What did he write? When is the most important time for you? When? It is the present. And what is the most important work for you? The work that you are doing now. The most important people are the people around you now. Why? That is because time only really exists in the present. We do not live in the past, nor do we live in the future. We only live in the present. How you live in the present determines your mark in the future. Next. This is the third president of the U.S., Thomas Jefferson. He has achieved great things for the independence of the U.S. Never put off till tomorrow what can be done today. People used to write this in their notebooks all the time in elementary school, but after writing it down, people tend to forget. People forget. In elementary school, people put off writing their journals the most. I remember thinking that I would do it the next and I would do it all at once. I would write a month's worth of journal at the last minute. Listen carefully. If you decided to meet five new people on a given day, then you should meet them. Next. This is the man in the hundred dollar bill. It's Benjamin Franklin. He actually never acted as the president of the U.S. However, his portrait is hung on the White House. He is that famous. He said, you may delay, but time will not. Time never waits for anyone. It keeps moving. Then, that misspent time becomes time wasted. Next is how a leader steals time. All of you have said that you would be leaders. If your partners are doing poorly in their business, or if you lead them to wander to a different place, then you as a leader are stealing your partner's time. And what does this kind of sin deserve? It deserves the death penalty. It is not deserving felony, but the death penalty. So, if you complain that there is not enough sponsorship or consulting, or that people are lacking sincerity, and as a result, if there is not improvement for the organization, then you are stealing all of the other members' time. Then, what happens? There will be conflict and super synergy of United Hearts cannot be achieved. There can be no collective intelligence. That is the result of a leader's failure. An organization or even a country can collapse due to just one person. Let us see how it happens then. Let's see if such is the case. Who is this? Huntington. He was a professor for Harvard School of Politics. You've seen him from somewhere before, right? Yes, he's Obama. There is a book that talks about the importance of culture. Prominent economists were invited to Harvard University. 
and they were asked how economic development happens. The world's most famous economists debated for two weeks at Harvard University as to what was the most important variable in economic development. They debated what was the most important factor for economic growth. Huntington, after listening to the whole lecture, he published a thesis regarding the topic of debate and concluded that culture was vital. Professor Huntington writes in the preface of the book, and he begins as the following, When I saw the data for Korea and Ghana, they were both in a similar state. However, in the mid-90s, Korea was able to become a top 10 economic powerhouse. Ghana, in the meantime, remained the same. How was he to explain the difference? The conclusion was that it was culture. That was the conclusion. Next, you all know that President Obama's father was Kenyan, right? Once Obama went to Kenya and gave a speech. He said at his speech that Kenya could improve like Korea as well. Let's see why he said such things. How much was our income in 1965? $106. What about Ghana at that time? If you see on the chart, it is double Korea's at that time. What about Kenya? It is the same as ours. After some time, however, you can see the stark difference. Professor Huntington said that there was no other explanation for this gap other than the fact that it was culture. These other countries have better natural resources than Korea. What does this tell us about these countries' leaders? It tells us that they stole their citizens' time. What then must one do in order not to waste time? What does it say here? First things first. Memorize this. Do what is important first. This is from his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's from this book. That is because it is so important. Then came out with a different book. What does he say in the new book? There are problems that can't be solved even if you try harder, smarter, or faster. I'm sure none of you are lazy. Many of you are probably wondering why your lives are not getting better. How will you solve this problem? The important thing is to do first things first. The important thing is to do first things first. You have to ask yourself what is important in your life. If you waste all your time because of your pride, then you will spend all your time on things that are not important. This is now the main point. It's called the Eisenhower Principle. Eisenhower was a very busy man. He was the commander-in-chief for the Allied forces in the Second World War. He had to command thousands of high-ranking generals. He was very busy. Even a platoon leader is busy. How busy a commander-in-chief must have been. And later on, he even became the president of the U.S. This was how General Eisenhower used his time. That is why he was never short on time, and that is how he could fulfill his weighty role. That is why years later time management experts call this the Eisenhower Principle. Our work can be distinguished into four different categories. What are they? Urgent and important tasks. Urgent and important tasks. What are some examples of urgent and important tasks? urgent and important tasks. For example, let's say one of your parents is ill. You have to bring them to the hospital, right? This is a very urgent and important task. Another example is that your boss tells you to finish a report on a project by 6 p.m. that night. Will you procrastinate? What happens if you put it off till the next day? You'll get fired, right? That is why it is urgent and important. Why is that? Because it is a company project. You must do it. How much time does it say here you must spend for urgent and important tasks? It says here 20 to 25 percent. 
What happens if you use too much time in this category? A person will be constantly tired and there will have no development. What do time management experts consider the most important? It is time in the category of not urgent but important tasks. Time in this category is the most important. So, if you analyze people who have been successful historically, they spend most of their time in this category. What are some examples? Coming to Atomy Lectures This is in the category of not urgent but important tasks. Coming to these seminars is like studying. I am not saying to study English or math. I am saying that you need to research and study how Atomy Business will make you successful. It is not urgent. You can do it tomorrow. If you can't do it tomorrow, you can do it the day after. Another example is meeting a new partner. A person will not go bankrupt just because he does not come out to the center to network with other people. However, in the long run, that person will fail. This is the most important. It is not urgent, but it is important. Data shows that successful people spend most of their time in this category. You get a phone call from a friend. And you talk on the phone for about half an hour. Then, after 30 minutes, you say, let's talk about important matters when we meet. Of course, you must pick up your phone when it rings. It might be urgent. But you must judge yourself if this phone call is important or not. You must be the one who decides. For your friend on the other end, the phone call might be urgent and important. But maybe you judge that the phone call is not important at all. Men usually receive such phone calls from old friends. Hey, buddy, let's have a drink. Come out. This is very urgent, right? But it's not important at all. Then, there is the category of not urgent and not important tasks. What are some examples? Watching a drama series on TV. It won't make much of a difference in your life. It shows on the chart that successful people used 1% of their time in this category. However, most women who stay home spend all of their time here. If they miss a TV show, they watch it again on reruns. If this is you, then there is no room for growth. You are committing the sin of wasting time. This is the list of important and urgent tasks. Solving a crisis when there's an accident. If your partner has an accident, what must you do? You have to solve it quickly. Or let's say there's an emergency in your family. Or a project with an approaching deadline. Or report a plan which your boss demands. These are all very important and urgent tasks. Medical treatment and recovery of health. Studying about the product, law, rules, guidelines, and etc. You need to know all these things if you want to do atomy business. If you don't know these things, you will bring harm to many people. Building a human network with your sponsors and partners. Making improvements and enhancements are also very important and urgent. If you fail with these things, your business will also fail. You need to have a paradigm shift which is to change the way you see the world. This is not to slowly change your paradigm. If you don't change it instantly, your paradigm will never change. Next is the list of non-urgent but important tasks. If you don't do these things, you cannot improve. Doing maintenance on machines. Next is enhancing your business capabilities. Reading, studying, acquiring skills, listening to seminars, and etc. These are methods to increase your potential. If you don't do these things, it won't show right away. But if this continues, you will become a half smarter. There is no growth. You can only see as much as you know. Next, establishing and improving personal relationships. Your relationships will not turn sour just because you did not contact them once. However, if it continues, it will be impossible to improve your relationships. That is why I'm saying this. There are people who decide by rolling the dice. To go or not go, that is the question. I have not seen many who have become successful from doing so. Next is the urgent yet unimportant tasks category. These are tasks that are urgent 
but not that important. Returning certain phone calls and emails, useless activities and drinking appointments. These things are very urgent, but they are not that important. Why? What determines if something is important or not? It is determined by whether it contributes to your development or not. Does it help me grow? I am not, however, saying that these things are not inherently important. For example, a high school buddy of yours calls you. He called for the first time in 10 years and he wants to drink. If not this time, there is no other opportunity. I am not saying that you should not partake in any of these activities. You should meet your friend, right? How do you change this to an important task? You can register your friend as an Atomy member when he is almost drunk. Then you say to your friend to invite all his other friends. There's that guy that you know, right? Register him. What is this then? It becomes an urgent and important task. So, even the small tasks, depending on whether you concentrate or not, can become an important task, or it can be just a drinking session with friends. Next is the conclusion. This is one of the best artists of the Renaissance period. If you see Michelangelo's work, you will think, how did he draw such a thing? I talked about Medici a while ago, right? He was a financier of Venice. That is why there is such a thing as the Medici effect, which was taken after his name. The Medici effect. The Medici family gathers a lot of money through finance. And what did they do with that money? They supported a lot of artists, philosophers, and poets. They gave them money. There was no purpose, but they just gave out money. That is why, at the time, many philosophers, poets, intellectuals, and writers Artists, sculptors, and architects gathered to Venice. What do these people have in common? Nothing. What does a philosopher and sculptor have in common? What does an architect and poet have in common? These people who had nothing to do with each other gathered to Venice. And what happened? The Renaissance, a movement which influenced human civilization the most, was born. People who had nothing to do with each gathered together, and in that place the Renaissance was born. That is why many major companies, such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft, they wanted the Medici effect to happen again. How? By connecting different things that seem different. Is it about creating a new business, new product, and new ideas? This is the Medici effect. Though it seems like there's no connection, there actually is. Everything is connected in this world. Michelangelo was a sculptor when he was young. He was sculpting in the street. A man saw him as he was walking by. And he noticed that Michelangelo was very good. At the time, Michelangelo was making a sculpture of an old man. At the time, there was no dentist, but the sculpture's teeth was straight. So the man asked, why are his teeth so straight? And... Michelangelo responded, I'll fix it right away, sir. The following day, the man saw that Michelangelo had fixed the sculpture. That's what Michelangelo did. So the man went to see Michelangelo's father and said, let me adopt this boy. 
That's amazing, right? That man was a Medici. And the father gave up his son for adoption. However, Medici took Michelangelo and did not teach him how to sculpt. What did he teach him? He taught him Platonic philosophy. The Medici family were followers of Platonic philosophy, the highest level of Greco-Roman philosophy. It begins from Socrates, right? So, Michelangelo masters Platonism at the philosophy school. After that, did he start doing sculpturing again? You can see Platonism in all of Michelangelo's sculptures. That is how his works became one of the best in history. All of you said you would be leaders, right? Become intellectuals starting from now. Become an intellectual amidst today's world. If not, you might end your life with just lots of money. I hope you will become an intellectual and a great leader. Thank you very much.